morning everyone. Windy today, just for something different. I've discovered that the Whit Sundays are actually windy a lot of the time. I think it's because we're here just during that particular time of year. But nonetheless, a very, very breezy morning. We are in a lovely bay called Butterfly Bay. That's because it's shaped like a butterfly, apparently. Also, I've noticed like loads and loads of actual butterflies in here, although I'm assuming they've all been swept away at the moment because there's <laughs> very few right now. That smell of bacon is like, the absolute best first thing in the morning isn't it nick is cooking bacon and egg sandwiches for breakfast so excited and then we're gonna head around to i think hayman island which is nearby just around the corner hopefully that will be all right slightly worried there might be some swell coming into that anchorage or that bay but fingers crossed when we get there it's pretty calm so that's the plan for today yeah hope you enjoy it beautiful day absolutely stunning day breezy but sunny really really lovely How's my bacon and egg sandwich coming along? Yeah. <laughs> what happened there? Have you ever seen an egg cooked like that? Sounds like an omelette egg, isn't it? It keeps the yolk inside. In like, case. That eggs. Yeah. So who got the like weird you rolly did. egg? It's not weird. It's not a weird egg, Can is I it? Can I ask you a question? Yes, my love. Was it a mistake and you just like styled it out? Yeah. Okay. Now. <laughs> yeah. Eat your breakfast. Oh, Ready to get going? Yes. <laughs> Under your Jumanji on the fore deck. Yeah, I know. There's a whole thing going on on the fore deck. Now you may be wondering why the strop is like all tangled up on the foredeck is because I had to pull in the strop really tight so that the ball, the mooring ball wouldn't knock against our hull. Obviously at the moment it's blowing like 25 knots so probably not such an issue right now but yesterday the winds were really light and that's what was happening. So now I have to untangle everything and we can get going. Alright we're off. We put a safety line on the strop as well because the rope that they use is so thick and it barely fits underneath the cleat. So, you know, we're kind of worried that it might work its way loose and then we won't be attached to the mooring ball anymore, which would be quite disastrous. So we put a safety line on um, just as a, I don't know, precaution. All right, let me um, clear up these lines and then we can get ourselves organized. So because this is a, a haven for yacht charters, all the different companies have 15 minutes in the morning and 15 minutes in the evening to contact the boats and find out where they are, what they're doing, give them a little bit of advice, tell them about the weather. It's pretty nice actually, it does remind me of the, the radio nets we used to hear in the Caribbean. And it's a good way of the charter companies knowing exactly what people's plans are. And as I said, we've been here a while now and you do every now and then hear, uh, you know, Someone's got a problem. In some cases, you know, they've got a mechanical problem. There's, you know, water coming in. Other times it's nice because the charter companies are like, ah, oh, yeah, great plan, but maybe you could change that plan and not do this because, you know, either the tides are wrong or the weather's gonna be too strong. But it's a nice way of helping people that probably aren't that familiar with sailing avoid some of the pitfalls that, that you know, you would make because I guess even us, we come to this area, this is not our locality and we don't know the strength of wind over tide for instance i always kind of like 
thought wind over tide, oh yeah, why do people get about wind over tide? For those of you who don't know, it's where the wind is coming in one direction and the tide is coming in the opposite direction, which happens a lot in tidal areas. And, you know, wind over tide can send up some really, really steep seas. You get these real big waves. Wind over tide, you can get like probably eight, nine meters in a big tidal race in a strong wind. And the famous ones, you know, there's the ones in the Western France, the Rade Seine, Chanel de Fort, but there's also the Gulf Stream. You know, when you, if you're heading across from Florida to the Bahamas, you cannot go in a wind over tide situation. Otherwise, uh, you do, it throws up ridiculous standing waves and you've got that four knot current take it going north. You, you want to make sure that there's no north in the wind. Anyway, so the they... Yeah, they, they kind of look after the people on the boats, offer them advice. You know, they're only 15 miles away. And in one case last week, where I think, unfortunately, the, the whoever had the boat um, stacked it on the reef. They got off the reef, but they bent the, the uh, rudder post. The, the charter company get in a rib and they uh, zip out and it takes them about an hour or two to get to you. So it's pretty nice. I kind of think if you are in Australia, either for holiday or you live here and you kind of want to get into bare boat chartering, this is probably as protected and hand-holdy as you could possibly wish to imagine. More so than chartering, say, in the Med, or we've chartered in Thailand, we've seen charters in the Caribbean. This really is handy-holdy. And I think part of the reason for that is actually the conditions here, at least while we've been here, have not been like particularly easy and straightforward. Like We've had really windy conditions. There is tide here, and the tides are actually bigger than I thought they were gonna be. We were in Springs a few days ago, there was like a three meter height of tide. These are not, you know, kind of beginner conditions. The, we, we've had like 25, 30 knots of wind and yeah, the chop is like significant. And so I think it's kind of good that the charter companies yeah, keep an eye on the boats and make sure that they're all okay and double check up on them. And as Nick said, it's a great source of information for us who aren't familiar with um, the area. And we are chartering this boat, so we, we also need to um, let them know where we are. But yeah, it's good. I, I don't know. I love it. Yeah, I agree with what you say about the tides. I mean, when I did my yacht mast, I did it in Grenada in the Caribbean because that actually gives you an RYA tidal qualification. The tides there are like 30 centimeters, it's a foot. So if you've got the three meter tidal range, which is what we seem to have here in Big Springs, that gives rise to five knots of current. Yeah. And you do need to know what you're doing. It can get quite shallow here. So if you're anchoring, you do need to be aware of like the state of tide, how much the water's gonna drop by. You know, there's things to kind of bear in mind. It's not straightforward. So you hear the, the charter companies being like, okay, so what depth are you in right now? And how much anchor chain do you have out? Three meters and I've got 65 meters of chain out. <laughs> well, we heard that. That was yesterday. 60 meters in three. Like 20 okay. times scope. Brilliant, I think you'll be all right. Actually, you know what? You can get yourself into trouble with too much scope. And we've seen that before. And it's not just because of the swing room of your boat. Because if you've got 60 meters of chain out, theoretically, you've got about 120 meters of swing room. It's a little bit less because the boat's afloat. But we were in Alvor Lagoon in Portugal, and it's pretty tidal, and it goes in and out, in and out, in and out. And there was a chap who had, there was no wind. He was in two meters of water. He had 60 meters of chain out, and he managed to just spin around in that no wind and wrap the whole chain around his rudder. He was actually rowed, and that's how it got wrapped around. Yes. Yes, true, it was road, yeah. So yeah, you can have too much out. We work on four times scope for chain, six times scope for mixed. We've never we've never anchored or rowed. And if it's blowing up, I go to five. So five times scope. So in 10 meters of water, at the maximum tidal height, that's 50 meters of chain. All right. <clears throat> now, do you know where you're going? Down there. That's there, yeah? Yeah, we're going. This one there. That one there, yes. Well, thanks. We just need to let the camera off. I dream that no one could say you a shelter, a whole act, a light that die with the night. You and I, we got beautiful conditions here today we've got a little bit of uh, roll from a bit of swell being kicked up by the wind 
but it is just stunning. That sun feels so good. Nice, quick, easy sail around to Hayman Island, and then we can um, just chill out for the rest of the day. All right, we've been here at Blue Pearl Bay for about five minutes and it's beautiful, but we've just looked at the weather and uh, the swell is gonna get a little bit bigger and it's already like bouncy enough in here and I just can't be dealing with that. So we're gonna move around to Stonehaven, which is much better protected. Let me put you down so I can film. Just pop it in neutral, babe, neutral. The stop's just under us, the stop's just there. And I just, just show me where, tell me where the stop is. The stop's right here, where I'm pointing. The stop's not that right are, are you asking or telling? I'm asking you. I don't know. Is the stop coming free? I think so, yeah. It's going forward. Yeah, we're free. Yep, yeah, we're free. What's that? You want to get well done. The next voltage. Well done. Uh, so when your battery is uh, voltage is sitting at 12. There is a big lump of land here, so I'm kind of like a little bit spooky. I mean, you would think the mooring balls would be well clear of anything. It's on the nose about 200 metres away, so right. if it's getting sketchy, I'll just I'll just reverse out. Right. The colour of the water just before that motorboat is like a different colour. It looks like it's just, there's a super shallow patch. Yeah, I don't like this. No, nor do I. It's such super shallow patch. No, we can't make that's a dive boy or a snorkeling boy. So there's no boys in this bay, no? No. There's only two, three boats here. There should be other boys in that direction. Yeah, let me go around. I'd rather pick up a boy in this wind. Oh, I do see one. I've said it before and I will say it again. Whoever had the idea of putting blue mooring balls around here, like clearly didn't think it through you cannot see them unless it is like glassy calm in any kind of wind where there's any like chop or the sun's in your eyes or anything like that you can't see the mooring balls until you're basically right on top of them you can see the reef markers yeah i think there's yeah there's a boy i can see a boy there yeah okay all right good choice so you won't be able to see on the camera but i'll show you Boy, like in there somewhere. And it is really, really blowing. It is super windy today. It's at least 20 knots in here, but it's protected nonetheless. And uh, so we should be able to get a much better night here than at um, Hayman Island where we were, because there's no swell coming in here. Just a little bit of chop from the wind. Nice view. Nice spot to spend the night as well. So we are anchored like right behind my shoulder right there and uh, we're just having a look around with the binoculars and we saw that there's like a waterfall in this little corner so we thought we'd come ashore and uh, check it out I'm not sure if we can access it but we'll go and have a look see if we can got a nice little beach here very very interesting uh, rock formations on this beach babe that's beautiful and this is why you should always be careful Anytime you go walking in Australia, I don't think you'll be able to see that with the camera. I can barely see it with my eyes, but anyway, it's just in there. 
Is there a spider in there? We'll go around this way, shall we? If anyone knows like how they were created, I'm assuming it's like water erosion. They look like big waves. Look at that one. These rocks are slippery. I just fell in the water. Ow. I was looking up because there's a spider web right above me. So I was trying to like avoid the spider web and I didn't see where I was walking. So it's my fault entirely. So, you go down there and you step down across there. So where your ass ends up where your feet are. Just watch, out, just be careful, just be careful. So it shuts it. That's it. Now you've got to do a quick, quick step one, across two, there. One, two, three. So one, two, and into that one there. This one right here? Yeah, so you use your momentum to carry you forward. Don't, don't dilly dally on that while you're falling. Alright, you ready? Go. That's it. That one. That's cool. Mm. No, it's up that rock. Is that going to get more difficult from here? Alright, I got stuck for a bit there. But I couldn't let it defeat me. I had to make it work. So, I still have a way to go before I can get to Nick. So I guess here we are, halfway up our, our climb. It's pretty... A bit difficult actually but it's so beautiful like absolutely stunning you can see the waterfall all the way up there and we've got this kind of dappled dappled sunlight kind of peeking through yeah all in all stunning uh teresa's a little bit behind me i've just asked her to go slowly or to not even bother coming up if it's too dangerous for her and then how do i get up there I made it to the top, I'm so excited. It was definitely a solid five minutes down there that I was like, I can't do this. I think my confidence was definitely dented by the fact that I fell over like just at the beach. <laughs> and like literally fell into the water, just walking along the beach. So I was like, mm, not feeling very sure footed today. However, once I kind of started to trust my own capabilities, got up here in the end, it took me a while, but I made it. Oh my God, well worth it. Check out that waterfall. And we've got it all to ourselves. This isn't even in the yeah. guidebook. Like no other cruisers or charters or anyone know about this. The only reason we knew about it is because first of all, I got a text message from someone who must be a patron of ours because no one else has my phone number, but I didn't have them saved as a contact. So whoever that person was, thank you. They said, come to the waterfall at Anchor Point. And I was like, what waterfall and then we just tied up over there and I was like I think this is Anchor Point and sure enough here's a waterfall this is absolutely spectacular Nick you're like a freaking mountain goat I never knew that about you you just go for it what noise does a goat make <laughs> 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 Yeah, these are the wet boxes slippery. Yeah, I know. It's covered in a very fine sheen of moss. Nice, eh? Good? Yeah, good. Alright, let's go back to the boat.
what a beautiful end to the day. Stunning, gorgeous sunset. And the wind has dropped off, so it's lovely and calm here. Really gorgeous. So thank you so much for watching this week's episode, everyone. I hope that you loved it. Definitely give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and leave us a comment, let us know your thoughts. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel because it really does help and we appreciate all of you who subscribe. So thank you. And we'll see you next week with a brand new episode. See you then.